Hello, I'm the Nostalgia Critic. I remember it so you don't have to. Hey kids, it's Saturday night! Hooray! School is out! Hooray! Night is young! Hooray! All your friends are free! Hooray! And you can't drive! Fuck! But thank God Nickelodeon's got you covered. For every Saturday night, Nickelodeon was kind enough to give us SNICK. SNICK was a gathering of some of Nickelodeon's most popular shows, along with a few new ones, that would air every single Saturday night. Their symbol was an orange couch that was so tacky for any homeowner to take in that they left it outside. Now, I've already talked about some of these shows, like Ren and Stimpy, Rugrats, and Clarissa Explains It All, but there were a lot of other shows that were thrown into the mix, too. Shows that once again helped Nickelodeon get its identity. So let's start with one of Nickelodeon's biggest hit... Funnish... Let's start with this. Roundhouse. Roundhouse was a sketch show that was kind of like that improv group you've seen that isn't really funny but God knows they're trying. It was pretty much kids who performed in front of a live audience with no real sets, very few props, and practically no costumes. We were supposed to imagine all those. Like imagine that I have a remote control. Now imagine that I'm changing the channel. Oh wait, I don't. That's why we have concrete matter. Use it! They would perform sketches, musical numbers, and all sorts of other crap while trying to somehow convey a message. Hi, I'm Mac McMurray. Try saying that three times real fast. Mac McMurray, Mac McMurray, Mac McMurray. You see, I can't even say it, and it's my own dang name. Remember those lame self-esteem groups that would come to your school, do some sketches, and actually make you want to return to your class? Just imagine that in prime time. In fact, some of these sketches actually seem a little risque for a kid's show. Like, they actually use the word hell a few times. Hell! That out of hell! Hell! And how about this bit about looking at a girl's breasts? Really? You're gonna talk about girls' breasts? Why can't I get a guy to look me in the eye? I've got brains. I've got charm. I've got huge <laughs> problems. <laughs> Don't despair because they stare at your pair. Try to cross your eyes broad from placement. Hey, Four Eyes. What do you say we go get a milkshake and just talk? That's right. If only women had breasts on their eyes, then we would pay attention to them. This show would go by so fast that it was actually kind of hard to tell if what you just watched was funny or not. Like, watch this sketch about a game show on bullying. I'll take kidney punches for the heck of it. Oh. Indian burns because I can. Ah! And purple nurples! Ah! Whoa, Dick! Looks like you need to think of something fast! In that case, I'll try running like a bat out of hell for a thousand, Bill! Ah! Dancing? Hi, why are we dancing? I mean, what the hell? It's like they ran out of punchline, so they just decided to dance! Oh no, I have no segue! What should I do? Dance, you fool! Dance! Quick, bring in the interpretive dancing minds to help him out. And speaking of songs, how come every song in this show sounds like bad Christian rock music? I know that I can find a friend. Everyone's got a mission in life and this is fine, fine, fine. Yeah, I take it back. Even Christian rock music isn't that bad. Everything electronic in the whole house is off. Well, what do we do now? Well, I guess we could talk to each other. Uh, this isn't talking, this is singing. Talk to me. Oh, okay. Well, how about that war in Iraq? I personally think that we... Oh, that was just part of the song. I'm sorry. I, I you have no interest in me at all. Sorry. And talk to me. Shut the fuck up. Alright, this show is freaking me out. How about we take a look at something that isn't the least bit scary? Are You Afraid of the Dark? Though not particularly frightening, Are You Afraid of the Dark was, well, not particularly frightening. I guess it was trying to be like a kid-friendly version of Tales from the Crypt, but even then, the only scary part about that was the Crypt Keeper's puns. I've heard of giving someone the finger, but this is ridiculous! It was about a group of kids that would meet every night to tell quote-unquote scary stories, and every single one would have different characters and a different setup. Though somehow they always manage to have the same storylines. Have you ever noticed that? There's always one kid who's kind and innocent, and another kid who's always a pain in the ass. The pain in the ass always gets his or her comeuppance from something supernatural, while the good kid always saves the day as they both learn a valuable lesson that ultimately results in a happy ending. Now, while I have to admit, being taught a lesson from a TV show can be very scary at that age, this show wasn't the least bit frightening! 
One of the biggest problems is the actors on the show. Sometimes you would get a good child actor, but for the most part, they were very rare among the mix. My favorite is this one kid from The Tale of the Phantom Cab. Like, watch this kid's stellar change of emotion. Ew. Cool. I'm playing two emotions at once! A shame I can't get either of them right. Ew. Cool. Or how about this scene where he tries to figure out a riddle this old wizard gave him? But you can't see air! Or can you? Wait a second, there's a trick here. You can't put something in the barrel to make it lighter. You have to take something out. If you take something out of the barrel itself, it'll be lighter. That's pretty bad. Actually, his acting sounds a little familiar. It's weightless. You can see it. And if you put it in a barrel, it'll make the barrel lighter. This is tense. R2, get us off this autopilot. It's gonna get us both killed. It's like they have the same acting coach. However, the most annoying part is just the kids who are telling the story who call themselves the Midnight Society. I think these kids take this stuff way too seriously. We're called the Midnight Society. We're right next to the Dungeons and Dragons role-playing game. Separately, we're very different. We like different things. We go to different schools, and we have different friends. Some of us like the same gender. But not me. But one thing draws us together. Smoking weed around the fireplace. The dark. And smoking weed around the fireplace. This is a warning to all who join us. You're going to leave the comfort of the light and step into the world of the supernatural. We play Magic the Gathering, bitches! <sighs> what? Okay, what's with the blindfold? Yeah, what's with the blindfold? This meeting place is secret. Yeah, and you're not in yet. There are people who would kill their unborn babies to find this location. Who sponsors Frank? We have sponsors? I do. He's a good guy. Yeah, but can he tell a good story? Who said that? Who dares question my storytelling abilities, huh? So the person tells his story, and at the end they have a vote as to whether or not he should be allowed in this most sacred of bullshit societies. And now the vote. Thumbs up means Frank's in, thumbs down he's not. And it has to be unanimous. Hey, um, is this really necessary? I mean, couldn't we just say whether or not we like the story? I mean, it'd go a lot faster. If you don't understand the rules of this society, without these rules, this whole organization would fall apart. Yeah, about that too. Um, do we really have to be so official all the time? I mean, can't we just, I don't know, eat some snacks, drink some beer, maybe tell a story, you know, do stuff that kids aren't supposed to do? I don't think you're a team player anymore, kid. Do I have to unleash the rabid, crotch-biting wildebeest again? No, 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 I'm cool, I'm cool. Just, God, don't release that thing. Good. So, like I said, thumbs up. Kiki. Betty Ann. Kristen. Eric. Simon. Dreadful. I also like the fact that before every story they throw magic dust on the fire that somehow makes the title appear. I guess it's just magic credit dust or something. Actually, I always thought that stuff was cocaine, and that's why the kids kept coming back all the time. But I will give it this, it was at least entertaining. I mean, sure it was campy, but a lot of it was creative, and it did often keep my interest until the end of the show. So I guess that's something. And I guess for really, really young kids, it was a decent enough show. But enough of all that, let's move on to all that! All that meaning all that that entails, but all that the TV series that was in fact all that and a bag of chips, but all that you know already because all of that. Alright, this joke is dead. <laughs> As if Nick didn't have enough sketch shows, we were given all of that, a very hit and miss comedy that actually had a cast that was half African American. And I gotta admit that was pretty damn cool. But in Living Color had mostly African American. Racist. Though it is funny, because when you look at the show about ten years later... Wow. Look how whitened up it became! It's like a plain black coffee turning into a latte and then just giving up and turning into milk. How delightfully sickening. But oh well, we were there at the start with the original characters and sketches. Like the two old guys who look like Don King and Uncle Remus. Excuse me guys, could you keep it down a little bit? Clayman, did you hear what that man said to us? Uh, he must be the president of the audience or something. Or the Good Burger Kid, who seemed to encompass all the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles in just one voice. Welcome to Good Burger, homie. The Good Burger, can I take your order? <laughs> or how about Cheese Police, the foreign guy, or Ear Boy. Alright, some of these characters did seem like satires of satires, but they weren't all like that. Some of them were pretty good. 
Like, I love the librarian who would always try to keep peace and quiet in the library by yelling at the top of her lungs. Quiet! This is a library! <laughs> That's funny enough, but then she proceeds to yell on the phone, eat chips, play the drums, and even do some construction work. That's actually pretty fun. I also like learning French with Pierre, where he taught you phrases that made you sound like you have no idea how to speak French. Plus, you have to give them credit on the best Ross Perot impression ever done in the history of comedy, performed by a little girl with rubber ears. You let me finish? Am I a eucalyptus tree or can I finish? Right on the crooked prosthetic nose! I got four billion dollars, so listen up. Wow, right down to the fact that he thinks he actually has money. How delightfully perceptive. And speaking of impressions, here's a weird little coincidence. Keenan Thompson, who would go on to do Bill Cosby on Saturday Night Live, is actually doing Bill Cosby here as a little kid. Then you go grab a permanent marker and proceed to write her name on the forehead. He grew into it. Now, like I said, this show was hit and miss, so there were certainly a lot of sketches that weren't that funny, too. Like, I never thought the Vital Information sketch was funny, but obviously the writers thought it was, because they used it all the friggin' time! If you're standing in a line, it's rude to keep turning to the person behind you and saying, I'm in front of you! I'm still in front of you! I am! <laughs> Here's another one. When writing a sketch, don't assume that things are funny because you scream it. Because it's not! If Little Miss Muffet sits on your tuffet, say, Hey, Miss Muffet, get your butt off my tuffet! <laughs> Can you believe those silly writers thinking something is funny simply because you scream it? Screaming in every other sentence is not funny! It is loud and annoying! And anyone who does it should be shot, unshot, and given a bag of money! How about some lounge music? Yeah, that's nice. Some sketches were stupid, but we still found them funny. Like how about the old man who would scream out the window just telling things to shut up? Stop it! Stop it! I'm going straight and stop it, you bird at birds! I'm going straight and I say stop! And then out of nowhere, whatever he was yelling at was suddenly attacking. That's so stupid, but for some reason it always made me laugh. A lot of the show was like that. For all its problems, all that certainly knew how to keep us entertained and always keep us coming back. Now, I stopped watching Snick around this point, but there's two other shows I gotta talk about simply because everybody says I gotta talk about them. One of the shows was Kablam, kind of like a cartoon sketch show that used a variety of different animation. Now the problem is I couldn't really find any full episodes. All I could find is a series of sketches called Action League, which kind of looks like my G.I. Joe's beating up some Barbies, and another series of sketches called Prometheus and Bob, which is about an alien who's trying to teach a caveman how to evolve, but the caveman never catches on. Both of these sketches are funny, I guess, but like I said, I couldn't find anything else, so that's about all I can really talk about. The other show is called Keenan and Kel, based off of the two most popular actors off of all that. From what I can tell, it's about- but it's a Holy shit, is that Coolio? How the fuck did I get Coolio? I mean, seriously, this is the guy who said Gangsta's Paradise was too serious to be parodied, and then he's doing the opening of a kid show? How the hell does that work? Yeah, well, you know, I was hesitant at first, but then I started watching the show all that, and I saw that these boys really knew what it was like to suffer. Because Lord knows I suffered through a lot of them Good Burger sketches, and they know all about pain, boy. They know all about pain. Represent. So I took a look at a special TV movie they made called Two Heads Are Better Than None, which is about Keenan's family going on vacation as his best friend Kel tags along. And from what I could gather, it wasn't that bad. It was kind of hit and miss like all that, though. Like when they want to sit around the campfire and tell ghost stories. When the bread popped out of the toaster, no one knew what to put on it. He said let's tell ghost stories, not ghost stories! Hey, as long as there's no Midnight Society involved, I don't care what shitty jokes they tell. The comedy is pretty customary. Keenan is the cynical smart one, while Kel is the energetic dumb one. Yeah, I haven't seen that before. Eleven battles of one soda on the wall! Oh, that's it? You just gonna stop at eleven? You mean we had to sit through a million bottles of our soda on the wall, and you just gonna stop at 11? You're not even gonna finish? Yeah, I'm tired of that song. I'm back! Also, what is up with Keenan's hair in this? He looks like one of those black cabbage patch kids. What, was that just the style then? Oh, look. Uh, the fire's dying down. Maybe I should go get some more wood for it. Actually, Keenan's starting to sound a little familiar to me, too. Yeah, because I'm not scared. I just want to get some more wood. Because it's flaming. The no, 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 no. I never thought I'd be 
30 sounded like in the, uh, uh, Keenan Thompson. Or, you know, I, I always thought it sounded like uh, Bill Murray from Candy Shack. Which is the greatest movie I've ever seen in my life! Well, even though it wasn't really anything new, I guess Keenan and Kel was harmless enough. I mean, where else can you see people dancing to a ludicrous song being performed by a piano-playing monkey? Well, okay, that one episode of The View, but I don't think that counts. So, that's about all I gotta say about Snick. It was fun, goofy, and an enjoyable way to spend your Saturday night before you discover booze and how to break the law. Sorry I couldn't be more detailed, but most of the shows I already went over in the last two episodes, and everything else I was too old for. But hey, next week we're gonna be tackling my favorite Nickelodeon subject, Nickelodeon Game Shows! That's right, we're gonna be going over all your favorites, like Guts! Oh, we couldn't find any good videos for Guts? Well, okay, we'll be going over other shows, like Wild and Crazy Kids! Oh, no good quality videos for that either? Okay, well, uh, what game shows do we have? Double Dare? That's it? I already did Double Dare, you miserable pile of sploosh! I can't do it again! <sighs> Great, so I have no high quality videos to do the Nickelodeon game shows with. That's just wonderful. How am I supposed to end Nickelodeon month, hmm? I can't just stop in the middle. Come on, give me something, anything. I'll take the worst thing that Nickelodeon has ever produced. The absolute worst. Anything. I, I don't care how bad it is. The horrible, terrifying thing that Nickelodeon has ever uh, uh, unleashed. Because I can take it. So, uh, uh, tell me, Nick, uh, but, uh, what exactly do you have in mind for me to uh, look over? Oh, no.